weird video game. So, Toy Story 1, of course, got a video game, as you can expect, and I'm not talking about stuff like Toy Story Car Racer, no, that's too normal. I'm talking about the Super Nintendo and Genesis game primarily. I'm sure some of you have maybe seen a bit of this before, but how many of you have really gotten in depth to this game? I don't blame you if you do, but the game does kind of come off as intentionally really freaking weird and creepy all the time. Like, the big nightmare boss, uh, Buzz Lightyear stage, of course, is like the biggest example, but while it's just generally very weird and... I put the game over in the other creepy playlist, and as well as its commercial, its commercial is probably the most well-known infamous thing from it, and I have that as the image in the iceberg chart itself, and uh, the Game Boy Color version, while it's nothing like this, like nothing near of like stuff that's worth looking at like this game, I know it's also particularly infamous because it's clear that they didn't know what they're doing, and Rex being like an enemy is the most like known thing about it. Live action recreation. I'm sure you all know of this, and... It's exactly what it says. A bit ago, people did a whole entire live-action recreation of the full movie, and yeah, it's pretty damn impressive, even if it looks funny and cheap and stuff at times, but I guess that's kind of what makes it more charming, is just how homemade it is, and apparently this could have been taken down, but the creators were so impressed and pleased by it that they're allowing it to stay up, and wow, who would have thought that not being an asshole is nice sometimes? Wally in Blu-ray. All right, this is what I was alluding to in the last ring when I was talking about the early bird cameo. So, this is something that I saw a while ago. A lot of people saw a while ago. It seems kind of forgotten about now, but back then, a lot of people saw this and they thought it was totally real. And being that during the to infinity and beyond scene, right as they're landing in uh, Andy's car. In the house, in the background, in the trash can, you can see Wally pop up. And it looked totally freaking real at the time, and people were like looking at the original movie, they're like, wait, what, was this here the whole time? I don't see it. And people were excusing that, being like, oh no, they just add this to the Blu ray version. But no, apparently it's not real at all. It was a complete hoax. I only just recently learned that it was a complete hoax the whole time, and yeah, well done. Toys Gone Wild, I included this because it's a really old and classic YouTube poop. It's probably the most famous one based on Toy Story and what probably kicked off like inspiration for all of the other ones that were made in the future. And I guess that won't just for the thing know because its presence on the internet was definitely involved for a while. It's a real freaking time capsule for the time it was made. And, and you know, it's really charming. Maybe it's not the most funny now, but it's still definitely got its own quirks and quality and humor to it and if you're wondering for uh later toy story poops that i think are really funny and good and aren't bland or soulless or anything i recommend do's poops of toy story uh because in fact watching her videos after jimmy creator showed me them is what inspired me to finally go ahead and do this so yeah shout outs to do and jimmy creator official misquotes so we all know of iconic scenes in the movie. Well, maybe not sort of iconic, but the lines in them. Uh, there's been times where these have been slightly misquoted. Nothing that's big, but, you know, still technically a misquote on uh, first show merchandise and other TV promos and stuff like that. Compared to the original movie, where just certain words are changed or mixed up and stuff like that. And you can see a whole entire list of them on TV tropes. I'll probably just be screenshotting those as the example for these. Adult test audiences. So when they were making this movie, they wanted it to be something that would appeal to everybody. And a particular story that I've heard that always stuck with me is that when they saw adults watching the film like they were being used as the test audience as it was in production not kids so much but when they saw them walking off the room after and laughing and quoting the movie that's when they knew they hit it toy story treats this is something i surprisingly haven't seen until recently but uh after the movie was of course made and successful ABC for Saturday morning bumpers in between shows asked them to make a series of animated shorts for them to be used as that in. There are a variety of shorts of the toys doing stuff and you know there's some inconsistencies between the movie. It feels like it takes place during the movie but there's certain things I'll get into that doesn't make sense with that uh, making people believe that they're non-canon. 
which is pretty obvious, but some of those believed to avoid spoilers. For example, uh, Buzz and Woody are still rivals, and Buzz seems to still believe that he's a, a real-life Star Commander, not a toy. And there's other weird things, like Sid's toys being the room, and also Commander Carl's there, but that's what makes it so fun, that's why I like these, is that once you get past the much more cheap animation and inferior weird voice acting with uh, Buzz and Woody not having their usual actors, it's just really good fun. Like, I mean, the best part is that you get to see all the obscure characters I mentioned before do stuff, like the shark got his own shorts and all of that stuff. It's really great. I recommend that you go and watch these. And Combat Carl, he's alive, he's fine, look at him, it's so happy. Sid and Andy's H's. So this is something that I've always thought about. I'm sure a lot of people thought about that. I still can't really get a clear answer on because it's weird when you think about it because it's hard to get them to try line up because Sid seems definitely a bit older than Andy, but they don't, both of them don't seem too old at all. Like they both seem like they haven't even reached age 10 yet, but Andy at the same time isn't like a toddler. And if you try to line it up with three and assume that the movie takes place like during the year, basically when they took out, then it just makes it all be more weird. But I don't want to think about or mention that yet. But yeah, it just gets you to wonder how old they are. Uh, in an early draft that I mentioned beforehand, Woody is like matches. What are these? You shouldn't be playing with matches. And he's like, what are you seven, eight? And I don't know if Sid's really that young. I think that maybe Sid's like nine, and Andy is. Six. Six? I, it, again, it's hard to say. Pizza Plants Extravagant. So this is one that's inspired by uh, an entry that I had in the Toy Story 2 iceberg talking about Elf's Toy Barn and how extravagant that store is and how much it must cost. And here it is, but for Pizza Plant, because wow, what a wild all-effort place this is. I mean, just look at the freaking arcade machines and games they have of you performing surgery on a dude aliens popping off his chest and there's like a laser and you get drinks from, like, ooze coming off aliens' mouths, and how wild, like, who designed this? Like, give them some credit. How much do you think this costs? Like, how expensive would it be to build a pizza planet? I mean, how many of these are around? Why Andy's mom was moving slash a divorce just happened. So I'm including this just because it's one of the most, like, well-known and highly discussed series that's been around for a while regarding the movie. I'm not saying it's true or anything like that, but it's just speculation on why exactly they were moving off what seemed to be a perfectly fine house and why uh, Andy didn't have a dad around, which is just people saying they're like, oh, they must have divorced and that's why Andy's mom is finding it necessary to move out and people saying that she's moving on to a smaller house and all oh, that's pretty depressing that I could get more into, but I don't really want to, and overthinking all that stuff, but apparently there has been official word on this, but that's something that we'll be talking about later on in the series. I don't know, uh, Andy seems fine, and they seem to be doing okay if they can go to Pizza Planet and have these extravagant birthday parties, but again, hey, I don't want to think about it too much. Anyway, that's the surface. Next up, we're going to be deeping deeper into the actual waters.